This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website or online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about my favorite sketchbooks that I've used in the past, my current favorite sketchbook, and all the sketchbooks I recommend for people who like to do mixed media sketching. I'm only going to be talking about sketchbooks that I've personally used because I can't really describe a sketchbook that I've never used before. I've went through a lot of sketchbooks in the past. I have so many sketchbook tours on my channel and I have videos of me going through all my old art that I drew when I was younger and I've kind of found a good lineup of brands and like types of sketchbooks that I really enjoy using and there's some really affordable options and some more expensive options if you want to opt for that. I don't have one particular sketchbook that I'm loyal to. I like to change things up a lot and maybe it's just because I haven't found the perfect sketchbook for me or my mood changes and I want to use different types of sketchbooks as I'm doing like different types of art. Um, I also like to use up ones that I've been given as gifts or in like sponsorships and stuff like that. Um, I don't like to let them sit and go to waste and I've suffered through sketchbooks that I just really didn't like in the past um, just because I didn't want them to like go to waste and I wanted to make use of what I had. So all my sketchbooks are very eclectic. There's lots of different kinds, but I'm going to tell you what my favorites are and what I would recommend to you if you like to do mixed media art. So the very first one I would recommend is the Canson XL mixed media pad. I like the 7x10 size. And this is a really popular sketchbook for a reason. It's very affordable. I think at my local Michaels, it's like $12.99 Canadian. And of course you wanna use a coupon on that to get at least like 30% off and then it's even cheaper. I swear that the price of these used to be way lower, but I guess inflation will cause that. Um, the only downside with this sketchbook is that it's spiral bound, but I don't think that's necessarily a downside. It just depends on what you like to use the most. I used to love using spiral bound sketchbooks and I actually preferred them. Um, but these days I just prefer a sketchbook with a hard cover and like a perfect bound so there's no spirals. Um, this is just because it's easier to transport them. The spirals don't get stuck in your bags um, if you're taking them in and out of bags a lot and they just kind of like fit nicer I find. But I really like the Canson XL mixed media pad. I feel like it's very robust. The paper can handle a lot of what you throw at it and Sure, the paper might buckle a little bit, but I think all the sketchbooks I've had had paper that buckled if you put a lot of like water-based materials on it and the paper absorbs and it kind of buckles a bit, but I find it's really not that bad at all. Like I, I just really think this sketchbook is a great option. It's a great entry-level sketchbook or a sketchbook that you don't want to like spend so much money on. Um, it can be good for people who finish sketchbooks really quickly and burn through them because if you burn through sketchbooks really fast You're gonna end up spending a lot of money if you go for the higher-end stuff And I think this is a really a really good sketchbook It's like a really good basic accessible sketchbook and I would happily use one of these if I had one I don't actually have my Kansan sketchbook with me. I filled it up a few years ago I think I was in art school or it was before art school But I got my sister to take some clips of the sketchbooks that I don't have with me So I'll show you those as I go because some of them I left at my parents house and they're not with me right now Also the Kansan sketchbook has rebranded so you might notice there's different covers out there There's like an old light blue one and I think it's kind of become a bit darker blue now That's just something to keep in mind the next sketchbook that I really like, and it was a pleasant surprise when I picked it up, um, I don't know why I ended up buying this sketchbook. I think I just couldn't find something that I wanted, but I saw this one and the paper felt nice and I was like, hmm, this seems like it could be a good one because the paper seemed pretty thick and not too smooth or too rough. I like a good middle ground textured paper, but not like, like very rough cold pressed paper. I like it to be in the middle, um, but I don't like extremely smooth paper. I just prefer more of a tooth. And I think this one had more of a tooth. I'm not really sure because I don't have it with me right now, but I really enjoyed this sketchbook and it's the Strathmore soft cover mixed media sketchbook. I was actually watching a video from Lil Star Nerd and she mentioned how this is her go-to sketchbook that she uses all the time for everything. And I can totally see why because it just has this really nice soft cover that's very smooth to the touch. Um, I was a little bit worried about it getting beat up, but as she mentioned in her video, it's actually kind of like charming when a sketchbook gets sort of scuffed and beat up. It's like signs of wear and tear and you like loving that sketchbook and using it a lot. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And sometimes it's nice to have a soft cover that you can sort of just like bend around and fold and like fit on things if you're like drawing not on a table. 
Um, it can be nice. I really liked the paper. I like to get the mixed media one personally. I like the ratio of the sketchbook. It's just a nice comfortable size to sketch. It's a great like good quality option if you work mixed media. It doesn't have spirals which is nice so those won't get all messed up or they won't get stuck on things. And I feel like it laid pretty flat and you can decorate the cover with stickers if you want because some of these sketchbooks in here you can't decorate with stickers and I'll talk about why. But I love putting stickers on my sketchbooks and it's really sad when I can't. But it seems to be that my favorite sketchbook at the moment has like a fabric cover and I can't really put stickers on that very well. Like maybe I could glue them or something. I could put patches on it but I don't really want to put a patch on the sketchbook because that seems like a waste of a patch. They just seem like more important than stickers because uh, the sketchbook eventually goes in a closet. So I don't know. But yeah, the pros of this sketchbook is, you know, it's Strathmore. They make good paper. They're known for their paper, I feel like. And it's great for mixed media. It holds up really well. The paper doesn't buckle too much. It's just like a good, reliable option. The cons are the soft cover. If that's a problem for you, it's just a little bit less sturdy but I think it's like t still totally fine. It's just something to think about. Another interesting sketchbook that I found when I was in art school is the Strathmore Vision. And it's kind of a weird sketchbook, but I really like it. I would say it's very similar to the Canton XL Mixed Media Pad. Um, it sort of feels the same to me, honestly. And it's also spiral bound. It's a similar price range. It's like $14.99-ish. Is that Canadian? I think that's US dollars. Um, I'm, I'm finding a hard time locating these sketchbooks like on online stores for some reason. Like I feel like it used to be a lot easier to find stuff, but maybe that's just me. Um, I like the seven by 10 size. They actually have lots of different types of sketchbooks. They have like sketch ones. They have a watercolor one that I think would be fun to try, but I personally like the mixed media one the best, but I have a feeling I would like the watercolor one even more because I do a lot of watercolor sketching. But the interesting thing about this sketchbook is it has it's basic like packaging cover, but you can tear that off and there's a thick paper cover underneath and you can actually customize that yourself and paint on it. I think um, Drawing With Waffles did a video of this, of, of her customizing the cover of her Strathmore Vision. I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna have to double check that, but um, I drew on mine. I think I drew chickens all over mine. It's not with me, but my sister has taken some clips for me, which is nice. Um, I think this is another affordable, option for people who want a sketchbook that isn't going to hurt their wallet too much. Um, I feel like it's great for any media you want to use. Very portable. The only cons are the spiral bound. Usually cheaper sketchbooks tend to have spiral binding and maybe this is just like cheaper to make um, but sometimes it's honestly nice to be able to like completely flip um, your sketchbook over. Like you know when you open a page you can like fold it back on itself and just have this small little thing. Honestly, sometimes I prefer that. I don't think that's a con, but I know there's people out there who despise spiral bound sketchbooks. I used to love them and now I like, I feel like I kind of prefer the like hardcover bi binding, but I would use a spiral sketchbook. Now I just want to take a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. As you probably know, Squarespace is an online site where you can build your own website. What I did is I chose a template that I really liked and then I modified some things with the themes and the colors and the fonts and I changed it into something that suited my art and what I wanted my website to be a little bit more. They have lots of templates to choose from and they're all pretty beautiful, honestly. And it's really easy to modify them to suit your own aesthetic and to fit whatever it is you're going for. I also love how Squarespace makes it really easy to link off to your other social media accounts. You can link to your Twitter, your YouTube, your Facebook, whatever it may be. You can link your email there if people want to contact you. I use my website for my portfolio and a little about page. Their portfolios and galleries feature makes it so easy to arrange my art and upload it. You just click upload, select what files, you can drag and drop them and it automatically fits to the size of your website. So you don't need to worry about saving your images out at specific sizes. If this sounds interesting to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash gelart for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and on to the rest of these sketchbooks. Now for my current favorite sketchbook. This is the one that I'm using right now. It is the Handbook Journal Co square watercolor sketchbook and I have the 300 GSM one because for some reason it was cheaper than the 200 GSM which basically just means it has thicker paper so I was like okay I guess I'll get the one with thicker paper for a cheaper price because why not um I love this sketchbook it holds up really well it just has a really nice like linen cover with an elastic and a 
ribbon, like a green ribbon to mark your place. Um, I think this is a really good brand. They have lots of options of sketchbooks. They're all sort of in that $30 range. So it's more of an expensive one, but imagine just having like a shelf full of these with like the date on the side or something, like just like a shelf full of like a, all the same square sketchbook. I personally really like square sketchbooks. I think it's a really fun format and it works out really well for social media. Um, not to say that I only sketch for social media, but it is part of what I do and having a square sketchbook is nice for that. And I also just really like a square format for making art. It's just one of my favorite ones. And I always try to find a square sketchbook if I can. I've never used a landscape sketchbook. I don't think I would like that very much. Also, this is acid free which means it's not gonna like yellow over time. It's a little more archival. I'm not sure if the other sketchbooks are acid free or not, uh, but I know for sure that this one is. Another sketchbook that I really like that I think would be good for people who like a smoother sketchbook paper um, are the Illo sketchbooks. And you probably recognize these. They used to be really, really trendy and a lot of people had them. Um, I never loved them because of how smooth the paper is, but I, I, I can work with whatever paper I have, like I can just adjust what I'm doing to suit the paper. And I think the Illo sketchbook is great. It has this really nice like leathery cover. I, I don't think it's real leather though. It's probably like pleather or something. Um, there's an elastic closure, there's a little ribbon and it's square. Um, what more could you ask for? I think there's a little pocket in the back as well. And you can put stickers on the front. I couldn't put stickers on my square fabric one because stickers don't really stick too well to fabric. But this, these ones I can cover with stickers and I've actually filled two of them in the past. Um, I think I got these as gifts. I think I got like a two pack from my parents and they're just covered in stickers. This one's covered in stamps. It's not that covered, but I really like them. Um, they're really great. The only thing about them is they go out of stock a lot and you might have to pay a lot for shipping depending on where you live. But I actually checked today and the shipping doesn't seem as bad as it used to be. I feel like the shipping used to be like $20 to get it to Canada, but now it's like only $8 US dollars. So it is more expensive. Like this is going to end up converting to like 50 to 60 Canadian dollars for me. So it's not really worth it for me. But if you live in the States, maybe it is or like wherever the cheapest shipping is or you can get the the big pack, the like five pack. Um, but I, I do think these are really good sketchbooks, um, especially if you like to do smoother paper stuff like markers or I honestly prefer like doing pencil crayon on smooth paper sometimes because you can see more details. Like you can get a lot finer details on smooth paper. So I would also recommend these if they're in your price range. Another sketchbook I wanna hesitantly mention is this Arteza sketchbook. And I really like this sketchbook. Um, it's huge. The only thing about it is that the paper is not the same on both sides. One side of the paper is this really nice like cold press watercolor finish. The other side is smooth. And if you try to erase on it with pencil or something, it kind of eats the paper. So it's a little bit like, it doesn't have a lot of like structural integrity on the back side of the pages. Um, but the watercolor pages are nice. And I still had a fun time with this one. Like on the pages that were like more smooth, I would just do like pencil drawings. Um, and honestly, like it worked pretty nice for pencil. It was very like soft and it, and it took the lead really nicely. Um, and then the watercolor sides were like more textured. So I guess it offers that variety. I'm not sure if their current sketchbooks are the same way or not. Like I honestly don't know how to tell because there's so many different ones and I can't find this particular one anymore. It always says it's unavailable on Amazon. I wanted to mention this one because I think the Arteza ones are worth looking into. So those are all the sketchbooks that I like the most out of all the ones that I've tried and that I would happily recommend to anyone who's looking for a good mixed media sketchbook. I'm not sure what my next sketchbook will be. I have a couple ones that I got gifted to me that I'm going to try out, but they don't seem like they're my type of sketchbook. They might be more for like studies or maybe I'll give them away, I'm not, I'm not sure. But uh, I do have a lot of like empty sketchbooks that I've got in my stash, so I probably won't be buying my own sketchbook for a while because I like to make use of what I have. Um, but I really love the current one I'm using, the handbook journal, handbook watercolor journal. I would highly recommend it if you don't mind spending that extra money. It's just really, really nice sketchbook. I, I love it. And any of the other options will suit you really well if you like to work mixed media. And there's some really affordable ones there, like the Canson XL and the Strathmore Vision. Those are the more affordable ones. And the Illo, the Handbook, 
and the Strathmore um, 500 series soft cover mixed media. These names are so long. Those three are the more pricey ones. But those are the sketchbooks I recommend. Let me know what your favorite sketchbook is in the comments and what kind of sketching you like to do because I can only really speak from like a mixed media standpoint and from what is available to me here in Canada and what's available locally. So I'd love to hear what all the other sketchbooks are out there. And if there's anything that is similar to what I mentioned that you think I would like, please let me know. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video.